Hey, I'm Melanie Johnson, along with my co-host, Jen Foster. We are both 13-time best-selling authors. We've published over 2,500 books and made all of our authors number one bestsellers. We own Elite Online Publishing. If you want to become a best-selling author, look us up at EliteOnlinePublishing.com. Now, welcome to the podcast that shares secrets from top industry experts that show you how to get lasting success and results. This is the Elite Expert Insider Podcast. Hi, everyone. This is Melanie Johnson. Thank you so much for coming to our podcast. I've got Jen Foster here, um, my business partner with Elite Online Publishing. Hey, Jen. Hey, everyone. How's it going? It's such a great day. It is a great day, and we have a great show and a great guest for you today. Um, Her name is Kathy Riley, and if you've been wondering why you do things and you don't know why, it's your subconscious. I just realized today in uh, talking to Kathy that uh, like 80% of the things we do come from our subconscious that we're not in control of. Hello. Um, All right. How do we switch that around or have more control of our life and finding our inner voice? Uh, So we're going to talk to her about those things today. So first, I want to remind you to subscribe to your podcast. Kathy, I'm sure already subscribed. So we want to make sure that you're a subscriber to our podcast. You share it with other people. And also always remember that if you're looking to write a book and become a number one best-selling author, we guarantee it here at Elite Online Publishing. All right, let's get started. Let's find out how to rule your subconscious voice and, and uh, your subconscious and your inner voice. Kathy, thanks so much for coming today. Well, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. You guys are absolutely adorable. So I love the energy and everything you bring. Um, and I love what you're doing with the podcast. So thank you for having Of course. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit how you got started into this and how you came to writing this book. So my background is litigation paralegal. So I spent 25 years working with attorneys and I call that um, a lawyer slave because my job was to make them look good. And that wasn't easy, Um, but I loved it. And then um, in 2011, um, I had an interesting journey, uh, four surgeries in five months. Um, So there was one day, okay, this was the second surgery. Um, And I, at that point, you know, women, we wear lots of different hats, right? Mm -hmm. So here I am, um, I'm working as a paralegal. I started an entrepreneurial business, um, direct sales with jewelry, because I love the bling. Um, I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm doing all of that. And my husband and daughter, who's five at the time, go up to the mountains to skiing because I had foot surgery. So I couldn't ski. So I had the day to myself. I don't know if you ladies know, well, the day to yourself, especially when you have a little kid. Oh my God. I thought it was wonderful. And then that morning I bent down and felt and heard a pop. And I was like, Hmm, that ain't natural. Um, But I told myself, Oh, it's nothing. It's nothing. You know, have you ever had a pain or something and you're like, eh, it's nothing? Well, yeah, I think we can all relate to that. Um, the day progressed and I started um, feeling worse and I physically got sick and I just got really, really uncomfortable. And I remember wanting to pick up the phone to call for help. And I talked myself out of it because, again, I said, this is nothing. You're being dramatic. You know, what are you thinking? It's just, it's just gas, you know, it's nothing. Um, And so I waited for my safe person, my husband to come home and he scooped me up and took me to the hospital. And I went in for emergency surgery. I had atopic pregnancy. My right tube had bursted out and I'd been bleeding out all day. So it wasn't nothing. (laughs) It was something. Um, Six weeks later, I ended up going in for two more surgeries, two detached retinas. And as I'm healing, I look at my five-year-old daughter and I didn't want her to be me. I couldn't pick up the phone because of my itty bitty shitty committee, my stinking thinking. I didn't want to be a bother to anybody else. And so I stayed quiet. And as I looked at my daughter I'm like, that's got to change. So I went to work on me. Um, I started paying attention to my choices and um, started really working on, um, I did mind, body, and environment. Mind is what I call the itty bitty shitty committee, my stinking thinking. Uh, and then the body and the environment is paying, a choice, paying attention to the choices of what I put in and on my body. And that all, um, I just 
did a lot of work. And so um, fast forward 2016, here I am back in the hospital again, this time with blood clots covering both lungs. Mm. And um, yeah, I go big or go home (laughs) when it comes to these. (laughs) So I'm okay. Life is good. But the doctors told me, I don't know what you're doing, but your healthy lifestyle just saved your life. And so all the work that I did, you know, this time when the pain hit, I was on the phone with the doctors. I made a plan. I just, I, I stepped up to be my own best advocate. And so I was like, well, there's the book. Um, and now I, I'm speak and I, I share my story with other, um, people, mostly women, but men need to hear this too. Um, that you, we've got to use our own voice. We've got to learn to ask for help. It's, it's on us. It's not on anybody else to take care of ourselves. Happiness is an inside job. So, um, that's where it came to be. I'm an introvert. I hate I can see the red cheeks and right now um, uh, it, it's, it's tough for me to do this, but I lead by example and I want my daughter to be able to use her voice. So I share my story and that's where the book came from. Wow. I just think that's so powerful on so many levels, whether you, even if you say, well, I'm not an introvert, it doesn't apply to me. Well, do you know somebody that is, do you have a, an elderly parent. I mean, I share the story of my mom who's 89 um, and she fell and didn't tell a soul because she wanted to be independent, didn't want to bother anybody. Sound familiar, right? And she scooted herself to a sofa. So we have the, a whole elderly population that I hear from all of my friends about their parents. Oh, you know, they didn't want to bother. They didn't say anything. They didn't do anything, you know, and it's that, it's that I can do it type of attitude. It's okay. And so whether you've got an elderly parent, you have children, or it's you that we're talking to, you know, pay attention, I guess is what I'm saying. So exactly. Explain to us how, um, well, let's just talk about how do you find your voice? And then we'll, you know, Jen can ask about your subconscious, but uh, let's talk about how do you go about finding that inner voice? So um, it's, it's, it's all about honestly getting quiet. We all have our true self in there and we were born that way. You know, you think about when you're, you're five years old running around on either on a skateboard or bike, no one was telling you, you couldn't make that jump or, or do whatever you were just out there doing it. And as we get older, um, we have voices that pop into what I call the database of our, our, our brain. And these are people and um, of influence, you know, whether they're teachers or parents, you know, a spouse, friends that tell us what we can and cannot do. So there's a lot of voices. Those all, all those voices get in there to find our own voice. We need to get quiet and, and listen. It's again, pay attention. Um, We have, it's, it's a gut brain alignment. Um, It's in your core values. And one of the things that really helped me is journaling. So um, a lot of people do something called a vision board. Well, when you combat the stinking thinking, a board is great, but the board doesn't tell you what you can and cannot do. So I created a vision statement and it's sort of like a morning meditation that I listen to every morning. And it sets me up to unring those conversations that drag me down. Mm-hmm. So it's about meditating, getting quiet, listening to your voice. Um, journaling is absolutely a powerful technique. Um, the question can be something so simple as, um, you know, what do you want to see today? Or what do you want to see in your career? Or what do you want to see in your life? Um, and you just start journaling on that. And eventually you're going to realize that the craziness of the committee sort of falls away And you're going to feel like, okay, this is really what I want to do. This is impactful to me. So it's about getting quiet and then finally listening to what you really want. Mm -hmm. And it takes time. It's not, it's not easy because there's a lot going on with the committee. Um, And when I do my vision statements, I focus on five, five areas, you know, spiritually and um, the community, how I give back you know, my household, which is my relationships. So it's not just, 
you know, whether you're married or your kids, but it's your extended family, it's your friendship. So it's your household. So you look at that, you look at career, you know, what do you want to have in your career? You look at um, financial, what do you want to have in your finances? And then you look at your physical wellness. So all of those areas um, you, you think on and you meditate on and you, you know, whether you pray, you pray on and say, what do I want? And it will come to you. But again, you've got to get quiet and you've got to really listen and pay attention because your voice is there. You've just got to get it back. I love how you talked about time and, and being quiet because a lot of times, you know, we get busy with life, we get busy with whatever. So whether you have set aside the time for journaling and prayer and meditation or not, you really do have to take that time for yourself and take that and be still and, and let that come to you and listen. It, it, it's, and it doesn't have to be like a lot of time. You know, people think you've got to meditate for 30 minutes, an hour or whatever. Take 10 minutes, take 15 minutes and just ask one question. Okay. Just pick one area, you know, your physical wellness. What do I want to be in the next three months? You know, how, how, how do I want to show up? And then just start writing, start journaling. Oh, I'd like to be, you know, I'd like to weigh this much and I'd like to feel like this and I don't want my knees to hurt. Um, And just really get clear on what you want to see. And once you know what you want, everything becomes an alignment and then it's easier to make choices to move in that direction. Yeah. Does that make sense to you guys? Yep. I'm writing it down. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm highlighting it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Highlighting it. I don't highlight a lot of things. So there you go. All right. So now the, the next part is, I'm really curious about this subconscious. I was just having this conversation with my son of, you know, behavior that he doesn't, want, but he's doing it. And it's still in his subconscious, like his subconscious is doing it. So why should he be punished if it's in his subconscious? Right. So, but, but so that's a whole nother, uh, you know, topic there, but talk to us how our subconscious works and your, you know, your explanation of it and how can we take things that maybe are our habits that we don't want and change them that are in our subconscious? Yeah, that's a juicy question. So here's, here's what I can tell you. Have, have you, you guys ever bought a new car, you mm-hmm. know, whether it's brand new or, or new to you. And next thing you know, you're driving around and you see it everywhere. Yeah. And you're like, what's up with that? This is my car, right? Um, the reality is the, those things are out there. The, that car has already been on the road. It's already been in the parking lot. It's been where you are. You just never noticed because your conscious is not aware of it. Mm -hmm. Now you buy a new car, it's in your subconscious and your subconscious pulls it forward to your conscious. So now you're like, well, there's my car. There's my car. There's my car. Your brain, you're only aware of about 20% what's going on. Our brain would explode if we were fully taking on all of the stimulants that are in the air. Mm -hmm. Um, So we only pay attention to small things. So in learning that, I love, so my background, um, psychology major, loved learning all about how our brain works and all of that, um, and taking it forward to your voice, okay, and how you use your voice, and paying attention, again, bringing the subconscious to the subconscious. Um, Have you ever been in a situation where you wanted to say something, and you do that, and then you got quiet? and you didn't speak your mind for whatever reason, right? So this is um, the juicy part. This is where those moments where you feel that, that's what you pay attention to. So it's learning that, okay, I'm starting to feel uncomfortable. I want to say something, but then my, my committee tells me to be quiet and I sit back and I keep my mouth shut. So at that moment, we know when that's going on. Sometimes, you know, the, consciously we know what's going on and consciously we talk ourselves out of speaking. So how do we take that moment and use our voice? And this is, this is a technique that, that set me, it it just changed my, my life. 
And that is you recognize, first you recognize that situation, right? You know, when you're in that conversation, so you pay attention and really all about, this is all about what I, what I talk on is paying attention. So paying attention when you're in that conversation um, and you use that voice and noting when it happens, um, how do you get comfortable with being uncomfortable and using your voice? Well, you identify a safe person and a safe space. So um, whether you are somebody that holds back at work and not use your voice at work, or whether you're somebody that holds back and doesn't use your voice at home, or whether you're somebody that holds back just all over the place. And that was me. It didn't matter where I was. I wasn't speaking. And so I identified my safe person as my husband, because he's the one person that I can show up the good, the bad, the ugly, I, I know he's going to love me. Um, so I identify a safe person and I create a safe space. So I told him, I'm like, honey, I'm going to start using my voice. I'm going to show up a little differently. So when I feel that hesitation, because I'm paying attention to it now, when I feel that hesitation, I'm going to go ahead and use my voice. <coughs> and I would love for you to allow me to have a safe space to start using my voice. Are you okay with that? And he's like, yeah. Yeah, you don't use your voice? <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's like, sure. What? Um, and so creating a safe person in a safe space gave me the courage that when I felt that hesitation to shift into using my voice. So it started something so simple as when you have an only child and a date night, or I'm sorry, an only child and they go to a sleepover, you have a date night. So um, my daughter goes for a sleepover and we have a date night. And he's like, where do you want to go? And my standard answer, because I'm just all about keeping the peace, is where do you want to go? And I know there's a lot of people that can relate to that. So mm -hmm. um, this time I said, well, I'm kind of in the mood for Mexican. And he said, okay. And I was like, wow. I just, and he was that. So it just more and more I did it with him, the easier it got. And it ended up, you know, I recognized the hesitation. I breathed in the courage. I exhaled the fear and I spoke and used my voice. And as time went on, it got easier and it started showing up in different areas of my life where it wasn't just the safe space. So I was doing it at work. You know, I was doing it while I was networking. Um, I was just showing up and using my voice everywhere. And then about six, eight months later, we're in the car again, my husband and I, my daughter has a sleepover. And so date night, where do you want to go? And my standard answer is Mexican. Cause I love me some margaritas and queso. And, um, he's like, no, I'm like, okay, well, how about this? And he's like, no, and I'm like, Ooh. how about burgers? And he's like, oh, I just had that for lunch. And I'm looked at him. I'm like, honey, it seems to me you have something on your mind that you want to eat. So why don't you tell me? And then I'll let you know. And I went, oh, snap, I'm cured. <laughs> so identifying the hesitation, creating a safe space with a safe person to use your voice will allow you to unleash your voice and show up differently and combat that stinking thinking. I love it. I love it. It's so good. I think everyone needs to read your book and, and get all that information, write all that down, rewind and listen to that again. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Well, thank you. So um, tell us, you also talk about uh, using your voice to lift up others and live a totally, like to make a totally well life. Um, so I think what you're doing there too, by finding your voice, it, it affects the other people around you. Mm -hmm. And I want to go into, like you said, um, a safe place and a safe person. Um, Cause sometimes, all right, I really want to go into that part because like sometimes people feel like they're going to be criticized or they're afraid of what someone's going to say to them. How do you get to, with the person that you're, you're afraid of, right? You're afraid of their response to you if you tell them, your truth, how do you get to a place where you can communicate and not be fearful, tell them something that you know you might be like, oh, they're not gonna like that. How do you walk through that? The fear of rejection. 
That's what we're talking about. And it's, Mm -hmm. we build it up in our head that rejection is such a bad thing. Yet when we're asked, you know, Coke or Pepsi, or would you like a piece of gum from somebody else? And we say, no, that's not a big deal. Um, So we've got to what I call Q-tip, quit taking it personal. Um, Rejection is not that I don't like you personally. It's that I disagree with you and yet we can still be respectful. So it's okay to disagree with people. We do it all the time, but we put some people up on a pedestal and we just want to please them. And the reality is the person we need to please is ourself. When we are, when we honor ourselves, everything else just melts away. We show up as our true authentic self and we, it is okay that somebody else disagrees with us. So rejection, it's, you know, just, you got to get used to it. It's okay. I think that's great. Real, really good words right there. You've got, you've got to think about yourself and understand yourself. And that comes back all around to that inner voice and the journaling and, you know, all the things that we talked about already, you know, being still all those things. So tell us where we can find you. So you can find my website is um, sharingtheshine.com. And you can find me on Instagram, again, under Sharing the Shine. I love putting out little quotes and motivational, um, and I'm getting getting into videos. Um, So that's where people can find me. So website and Instagram at Sharing the Shine. That's great. Great. We'll put those links up. Yeah, we'll put those links in the show notes and also on YouTube. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me. It was an absolute pleasure. Terrific. Well, remember to subscribe to our podcast. And I hope you got a lot out of this podcast. I was taking notes, as you saw, if you're watching video, I had a highlighter in my hand and uh, a lot of great, great, useful information, whether you're running a business or you're running a family or you have a relationship, I think you can use it in all of those aspects of your life. So remember to subscribe to our podcast. And if you're looking to write a book, we guarantee that all of our authors are number one bestsellers because all of them have been. So remember to reach out to us at our website and Uh, fill out the application there. So we'll see you next time. Have a great week. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Hey, are you looking to increase your revenue, build credibility and elevate your brand? This podcast is brought to you by Elite Online Publishing, an innovative publishing and full spectrum marketing company. They will publish and market your book to make it a number one bestseller. Becoming an author is the best way to market your business. So contact them at EliteOnlinePublishing.com today. All of their authors become number one bestsellers.